Welcome back, friends, to the channel. So I was asked by several of you, can you share with us what you and Mrs. W are taking to the Thunder Ranch Urban Rifle? Uh, and before I do that, I want to share a story with you. So uh, growing up in Oregon, uh, the Oregon Trail and that history and that heritage has is, is always been something that's kind of really defined us here. When, when the settlers left uh, St. Louis uh, to come west over the over the Rockies and those great, it, it, and they all basically it all kind of culminated and ended here. So it's always been really a big portion of our of our culture, a portion of our identity. And in school, I remember we, I was just little, maybe third or fourth grade. They took us to a, an Oregon Trail museum where they had artifacts and the old Conestogas and such. But there was something in that museum that made an impression upon me that I'll never forget. And it was, uh, it was a display and it was a, a small, maybe a 20 pound bag of grain of some sort. And inside that grain, um, they had found a small piece of bone china, a small saucer. And the curator went on to tell us a story in that when the settlers were coming up over the mountains, they had these ideas in their mind of what would be required and what would we need. And we need so much um, gunpowder. We need so much, uh, so many tools and different things to repair and, and canvas and all these things. Well, when reality struck and when you, they really got hit in the nose, um, it really caused them to strip down what was truly important. And in this particular case, a woman had, um, had taken her prized possession, which was her family china. And her husband had come to her and said, oh, we can't take that. We have too much weight. Um, the horses can't pull it. Uh, we've got to leave this stuff behind. And she was so distraught by this that the only thing that she could do was to, was to take a, one of the smallest pieces and to hide it in that bag of grain um, as a remembrance of, of what she once had. Uh, it was a very fascinating story. So why I'm sharing that with you is that that is very my it's it's been my very uh, experience in life with um, was we'll, let me start with here. So I have had a, a great deal of um, hand training, um, uh, working defensive hand. And when I first started getting serious with it, and sheriff's department in Clackamas, Oregon, it was interesting. So you start at a base level, and and of course it's very restricted, and you have to you range and you have to stand behind the lanes and you have you know it's very controlled and all that and when you can prove proficiency and only then can you move on to the next level which gives you a little bit more freedom and a little bit more freedom and on and on and on right so as you progress to the point where you're actually moving and working with um, sheriff's department guys with SWAT team guys you you ha you have earned the trust you have earned the respect and, and you have shown the proficiency to operate with these professionals right so the interesting thing is so at the very beginning levels you had guys men and women showing up with all this huge a giant array of equipment you had cz's you had sigs you had night weapons you had all of these things right and everyone had their own idea and, and what they thought would be reliable um, dependable and accurate right the interesting thing with that though, you started to see things fall apart. You started to see shortcomings and malfunctions happening over and over again. And the more pressure you put upon these tools, the more it started to, the cream started to rise to the top and everything else started to fall on the wayside, right? And the fascinating thing, it really struck me one time is I remember when we first started, how we had all that wide variety. And when we were work operating at the highest level, you know, and shooting and moving and, and working with professionals, when I looked down the line of the five, six, five of them all had the same, including myself. What do you think it was? Yes, 19. That's what it came down to. It was the team, probably the perfect, if you could only have one, the perfect, the best one out there. It just worked. Uh, it was simple. There was just no Bravo Sierra. It was just, it was just the tool that was required to get the job done when it really came down to it. Fast forward a little bit. So uh, I thought that I would learn my lesson from this, right? No. So I go to, I start going to some precision courses and Thunder Ranch primarily with Clint Smith. And it was really interesting. It was the same thing all over again. Here you have all these guys 
uh, basically like they did loading up at the beginning of the Oregon Trail, reading all the blogs, watching all the YouTube videos, buying into all the hype, right? We all do it. We all, we're all just looking for something to spend our money on to be cooler or to have the latest, greatest thing that we think is going to give us an advantage. And nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, it's at more of a hindrance than anything else. So here we are. We find ourselves at Thunder Ranch on the high angle course with all the latest gizmos and this and that and I I was guilty as all I had all this other garbage on the on my and what it came down to when you started being put in a, a stressful situation when you started being being like really being pushed by Clint Smith and his instructors all of that stuff started to become a liability and there was like a little pile developing over like on the side where the stuff was coming off and guys were tearing stuff off and getting rid of it because it was not helping it was hindering uh, and it was getting in the way and what came out on top was simplicity simplicity is always the key again fast forward again one more time to the urban took last year the same thing now you think we would learn our lessons but no we show up and we, we think we can improve upon everything right so I've got uh, stuff bolted on and I've got these high-speed triggers and all of that <laughs> and, and I was having some malfunction problems and Clint came up I, I if you haven't taken a class with Clint and Heidi Smith um, you've got to do it it's it, they're not going to be around forever the opportunity is not going to be there forever so if you've been kind of kicking it around just sign up and do it uh, it's a it's quite an experience Clint is so he comes up you know and he's a he talks like this and he's pretty scary and he's a marine you know combat veteran you know all this stuff it's, but he's he has a heart of gold right so he's coming around he's and I like he's always he's touching you know and, and he's helping you and he's hands-on and he cares that's the thing that I I take away from not only Clint and Heidi but their instructors is they care this is their mission in life. This is why God put them here, is to train people. And they have found their calling. It's rare when you meet someone that's found their calling, and they have found their calling. But so, I got this goofy trigger, right, in the, in the Daniel defense. And, and I'm gonna paraphrase here, but basically it says like, don't come back here with that thing in there. If Eugene Stoner wanted that trigger in there, he would have put it in, <laughs> so, so sort of thing, right? So. So that's to get us a long, this is a long way around, but I wanted to kind of set this up uh, where I'm coming from uh, and why I've made the changes that we, we've made big changes this year uh, that, that we have. Uh, it's because finally it's dawning on me after all this experience that less is typically more and leave it alone. You're not smarter than the guys that do this for a living. You're not smarter than uh, probably the manufacturers. So just leave it alone and be very careful about doing any changes, right? Okay. so. I'm gonna share with you what we're bringing. Uh, should I start with Mrs. W's or mine? I'm gonna start with mine. No, I'm gonna start with Mrs. W's. Okay, of course, Daniel Defense. Uh, this is the DD4M7. And yes, Clint, if you're watching this, or Heidi, I did take that goofy trigger out, out of there, and I put the trigger in that Eugene Stoner intended to be in there. So I did. Well, wasn't gonna make that mistake twice. I'm not the brightest guy, uh, but I do listen to instructions and that will get you a long way in life. So uh, apart from that, bone stock, a bone stock DD for V7. Okay, except for a couple things. So one thing, now this urban, let me back you out here. This urban so we can all admire the hardware uh, course is, uh, is a Wrangler Star course that the um, uh, Clinton and Heidi put on for us that we've, we're doing every year, or we've done for two years, we'll hopefully do every year. Uh, and it's uh, teaching couples to work together and with the fours or the teens, whatever you want to call it, uh, as a home defensive weapon. This means that this is short range stuff. This is ev everything in this course is going to be inside 100 yards um, and as close as, you know, maybe 20, 15, 20, 25, 50, right in there, but it's working together as a team. So lightweight and high speed. So last year, what I had on, on hers was it was set up like this. Of course, we got rid of the goofy trigger. Um, and Clint's a big advocate of, of just having a white light on there. Nothing fancy. And guys will say stupid things like, oh, it's just dumb to put a, a light on there because you, you know, you can't, that's the thing, how far is that thing gonna shine? You know, 30, 40 yards? Well, what we're talking about a home defensive weapon. Would you wanna go downstairs trying to manage this tool with a separate flashlight? It only makes sense. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I've got, um, this is just a, 
uh, an O light um, to put on there. It's a, it's a decent light. Um, I put uh, just some standard Magpul backup sights. I don't think I had backup sights on there and he gave me a hard time for that. So I've got that. The only kind of fancy thing is on here is I've got a, a Thunder Beast muzzle brake on there. Not, I didn't put that on there because I think it looks cool. I put it on there because that's what receives our suppressors. We have two Thunder Beast suppressors. So that's the only reason. Biggest change in Mrs. W's, of course, is the optic. So last year, uh, of course, this is what I typically run and for where we live and being out in the country and having big property and, you know, these are our primary, this is going to be the primary we'll grab when we have predator problems or coyotes or different things. And so I need to be able to shoot out to five, 600 yards uh, with this. So that's why I really like the Leupold because it's a variable. I don't know which one that is, which it is. They put it together for me. It's a, it's a VX6 beautiful beautiful scope it's got a red dot in it and it's variable uh, from one to six that way on six power is really nice when you're at three four or five hundred yards right but for clint's class it wasn't super ideal primarily because it was really heavy for mrs w i mean it adds an initial weight and we're talking about three days of highly intensive classes uh and and you get broke down when you're just common folk like we are and you're just not used to that type of training it's it's tough it's tough, it's not undoable, but it's tough. So anything I can do to, to make it a little bit easier for her and get some of that weight off that especially her being a female, a little bit less upper body strength than most men are gonna have, uh, it was a little bit of a struggle for her. So I, I really took that in consideration when I was setting up her this year. So we got, we're gonna take this one off. That will go back on when we come back home. Um, and I went with the aim, the aim point T2. I like the, I went, decided to go with the aim points, I think, and this is just my opinion, and it doesn't have a lot of value. Um, I, I do a lot of research, and I talk to people that do know, and I make my, I make my decisions off of that. And when I want to buy a welder, I'm not talking to the salesman. I'm talking to the guy that uses it every day. I'll actually, I actually did this when I started looking at welders. I went to a big welding shop, and I talked to the guys, hey, which one would you buy? Or if you're going to buy a car, you go into the service shop, talk to the mechanics, the line mechanics, and ask, hey, does this thing have any problems? Would you consider this? What should I look at? That sort of thing. You'll get the real answer, right, by talking to the pros. And I think the pros are pretty much unanimous that the Aimpoint T2 uh, is among the very best. Full military specifications, this is uh, as good as you're going to get. The reason why I'm going over these versus the, AIM, uh, the EOTEX is I have EOTEX is I... They're big, they're heavy. The AA batteries are a nice feature. However, you can't put a lens cover on them. And we live in country where it rains a lot and not having a lens cover on these, I think is a huge bummer. And the switching system I think is confusing and the push, the double pushing the buttons if for people that are not used to it all the time, I just think that there's better. I know there's covers for these, but they're, they're not very good. They're kind of phony. So this, the T2 Aimpoint, it has so many things going for it. What do you got, a five year battery life? So folks will say, well, you can't get AA, those strange little watch batteries in WROL. Well, it's a five year battery life. You can just leave the thing on. And sometimes I think, you know, you gotta kinda in, embrace the technology and live for the moment, live for the day versus what is happening versus what might happen. If you're worried about it, go buy yourself a dozen of them off of Amazon or eBay and throw them in your they're lithium, they're gonna last an age, right? So I like this, it's got so many things going for it. It's got the caps, right? Shoot through cap, uh, built in, and so that's gonna protect it from the rain and the mud, but the size and the function, and the form factor and the function, it's just simple. Turn it on, turn it off, right? Turn it on, turn it off, one big dial, that's it. No pushy buttons, no trying to remember, do I push this one, do I push that one? If I want it brighter, I roll it forward. If I want it less bright, I roll it back. Beautiful, beautiful sights. I haven't even shot with these yet, but uh, just from playing around with them and looking at them, they are fabulous, as well as the quick attach. You know, I can flip that lever right there and it's uh, gone. So that is the biggest change with Mrs. W's. Now this now comes in without the sling at 7.2 pounds, and that is with backup sights, with the optic, and with a light. That's it, that's pretty good. That's pretty light. It feels light in the hand, and that new optic is going to be quite nice. Okay, for mine, uh, uh, pretty much the same. I haven't really changed anything other than um, the same optic. I'm running also the T2, uh, the 
mention Aimpoint. Yeah, Aimpoint makes the T2. Uh, same thing, uh, same things. I've got backup sights. I have the Troy uh, battle sights. So they're a little bit different than the Magpoles, but you know, essentially the same thing. Uh, this is a Colt, or what is this? This is just a Colt. Uh, it's their new one. It's the one that, this is the factory, um, good grief. I can't even think what this is called right now. It's, it's, all, it's all original. The factory apart from I didn't like the stock and the grip uh, was really uncomfortable for me. It had a little finger deal there that rubbed blisters on me la at last year's class. So I just put a basic Magpul lightweight on there. This also, uh, how it, it kind of interesting, weighs exactly the same as the Daniel Defense at 7.2 ounces. I just put them on the scale. They're exact, exactly the same. Um, I have a little Surefire, just the old 300, not the super bright one. Um, I put this little little shroud deal on there. I remember, I don't know where I found that. I found it online somewhere, but th this is not really designed for <laughs> Notice that it was getting bumped and, and turning the light on a lot. And so having this shroud on there kind of protected it so it didn't, it doesn't do that. It doesn't seem to interfere at all with the hand. I mean, it's not the fastest high speed one, but it works great. Um, no problem. And it's a, it's a bright light. So that is basically what I'm running. So if I had to choose, guys will ask me, ask me this all the time. If I had to choose between the Colt and the Daniel Defense, or which would I buy? Um, number one, I would buy a Colt. Number two, I would buy a Daniel Defense. And number two, also, I would buy a BCM. Um, would I buy anything else? Nope, that's the, ones, <laughs> that's the ones I would look at. Why the Colt? It doesn't make sense, uh, the, how my love for the Colt here. Uh, but it, maybe it does make sense, but I'll tell you what it's like. It's like, there's girls that you look at that you think, yeah, I, I should date her. There's no reason why she would make a great wife. She would make a great mother. Um, everything's perfect. She comes from a good family, smart, good education, pretty, all these things. But then there's the one that you shouldn't date uh, that you want, right? <laughs> you can't explain it. It doesn't make any sense. It's pro She's probably not better in any way, but it's the one you want, right? I feel that way about the cult. It's just, it makes me feel good to see that M on there to see that prancing pony on the side and to know its heritage and to know that uh, I, I, I like it. It just makes me feel good. It makes me feel secure. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy at night to have this by my bed. Is the Daniel Defense a good, of course it is in every single way. It probably, well in fit and finish, it exceeds the Colt in almost every way. It's way more polished, it's smoother, it's got a better trigger on and on and on, even more ergonomic, the controls on it, the soft rubber, all, everything about it is, on paper is better, <laughs> maybe, but I like the Colt. I wouldn't, I, I like it. It's just what I like. I, I don't even, I just write that one off as Mrs. W's and this one's mine. I like, <laughs> if I bought another one, no, I would only buy a Colt. So, Man, this I can I talk or what? All right, so I'll finish up with this. So slings, um, well, quickly, uh, I want to talk about magazines too. Uh, slings, I uh, the first sling I bought was uh, this is Blue Force Gear. Uh, this is a two point sling. Mrs. W is using this one. Uh, it's okay. I, I thought it was pretty good until I started using the Magpul. This is the Magpul MS1, and this one's a better sling. It uh, slides better. It's got a better feeling material. It's it just in every aspect I like it better. So um, I'm running the MS1, yeah, the MS1 Magpul. That's I, that's the one I would buy. Um, magazines. I'll be taking. People ask me how many magazines I have. I have probably uh, 70 or 80 in here. Uh, what? How many do I own? Probably 150. Probably, I would guess, at or near around 150 total. So I've got these all loaded up. Um, I just keep them in these, uh, once I get them full, I keep these in these condition one or a Pelican style case, a waterproof case, and I have everything preloaded. What do I, what's my choice on magazines? Whatever's on sale. So I have a, I don't know, there's some website that sends me these advertisements that I buy online from. And they have specials every week or so, they'll, so they'll send me an email. And whenever, they'll have a, like once a month, they'll have a magazine special where you can basically get them for about eight or nine dollars a piece. And I'll just buy a case of them um, as I go around. So every month, I make a major 
important purchase of spread out between my five calibers. So if um, at the first of the month, if the 22 stuff's on sale, I'll buy 5,000 rounds of 22 or 5.56, I'll buy 1,000 rounds out. Or sometimes they have green tips or double lot or slugs, whatever. I'll just kind of rotate around and just continue to build up my stock. And in between that, when the magazine sales come on, I'll buy a case of those. So if they're aluminum or steel or the Magpul, the plastic ones, I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, I just like to have them. What, what's my end goal? I don't know. It'd be nice to have 100, ma 100 mags for every, every different... Um, probably be a good place to start uh, but so I'll be taking I think there's 75 or 80 mags in there and we're special and that is uh, the non frangible I think that's what it is is it frangible non frangible this is what it looks like um, because we're steel targets up close uh, there's a high risk for ricochet so this is not only is it lead free uh, but it disperses so it get the impulse and the accuracies I mean it seems just you wouldn't know it any different than the other stuff it's just that uh, as soon as it hits that metal it dissipates into kind of a, a dust or a powder um, and not to mention when you talk about having a range that you're having hundreds or thousands of people go through and will be in three days two thousand rounds between the two of us um, you multiply that over years and years you would really contaminate your property and your range with lead so it costs more you know you're looking at what is it? $500 for a thousand? 595? It's expensive, but um, yeah. But that's that's what it is. If you want to, that's what you and it's a safety issue and a um, not poisoning the land, poisoning yourself issue. So that's what I'm taking. That those are, the, are two rifles, optics, slings, um, and our magazines. Clothing is also a big part of it. Um, if you want to, want me to expand upon this i can share all you know the clothing and my choices with that what we're taking um eye care and ear ears and all that let me know in the comments i, I can we can do another video and go on and on about that uh that's it that's enough thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the next video